855. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is a board-certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. Oh, boy. All right. So uh, I gave the phone number out. All right. Tonight we have uh, a couple shows going. First off, uh, we have uh, Master uh, hypnosis sir. <laughs> Master of Hypnosis, Tom Silver is in here. Hello, Tom. Hi, Adam. How are you? Hi, Doctor. Um, I'm a little cranky, but other than that, uh, I'm fine. Sonny Garcia will come in here at 11 o'clock. He is a uh, master surfer, and uh, he's out here uh, promoting uh, Board Rider Expo, which will be the 25th and 26th. I think uh, he's the number two guy in the world, uh, one behind Kelly Slater, and we'll uh, talk to him about something I know little of, which is surfing. Drew, you know anything about surfing? Anymore. I know Sonny is from Garcia, though. <laughs> Sonny's from Garcia. Whoa. Oh, boy. Whoa. It's going to be a long this night. Why you're cranky. Why? Because I'm tired? Yeah, because you're out of it. Okay. I know Sonny Garcia is from Hawaii, and we can get to the bottom of the whole mahalo oh, good. Okay. thing. Yeah, okay. I'm sure he'll know all about that. I think it uh, says it on his uh, wetsuit. All right. So, first, let's talk hypnosis. Um, Tom is a guy I know from the K-Rock Morning Show. He's a bit of a regular on the Kevin and Bean Show out here in Los Angeles. Does a uh, an amazing job, and uh, and we're friendly as well. Yes, we, we are. Uh, we are. It's, uh, there's nothing gay there, although uh, I think there could be. Yeah, there could be, but I don't think we're going to allow that. We're, we're, you know, have, we're, did, have you left any post-hypnotic suggestions in, in Adam's head from the well, times when you hypnotized well, him? Well, absolutely, and that's to believe in himself, to be more successful, ah. to get what he deserves in this life. Mm. And, you know, our minds are very powerful, and we only use about 12% of our conscious brain daily. I use 9%, thank you. Yeah, well. I and, want to mention that. And, and, and when you're hypnotized... dealing with his porn collection. Yeah. Is, is it almost like cracking open your skull and stuffing in things that otherwise couldn't permeate your thick skull? Well, what it is, it's actually breaking the barrier, what we call the critical area of mind, the barrier between our conscious and subconscious mind. You know, as human beings, we have two minds operating simultaneously at once, our conscious mind and our subconscious mind. And our subconscious mind is 88% of our mental strength. And that part of our mind actually is where our life script stems from, from birth to about five years of age, everything goes into one mind, a subconscious mind. Now, do they have, uh, I don't mean to uh, no, question go, you. Go right ahead. Tom, if, uh, in fact, that sure. is your name. Yes. <laughs> do yes, they please. have data to back this kind of up, Can uh, this, this, uh, these uh, allegations up? Can they substantiate this? What? The what scientists. Allegations? Well, allegations? that everything from age to zero to five well, well, goes it's, into it's, your subconscious it's, mind. It's axiomatic now. Yeah, I mean, it, which which you know sort of theory you adhere to? It's all so based on the same say stuff. From from birth to three years of yeah. age, or pre birth, or pre birth, absolutely, yeah. Okay, but but, but our guys. but our mind takes in emotional feelings, our subconscious mind, and and that's the inner part of our brain. You, you rely on this a lot. I mean, this is sort of where your instincts come from, and you know how your memory works, and how you you talk about how your mind functions. Right. That's utilizing subconscious impulses to, to generate conscious thought. Yeah, your subconscious identifies and associates with your conscious thoughts. And actually, all the listeners, every one of us have been hypnotized before. When you drive in your car and you're daydreaming, your subconscious is doing the driving for you. You're on automatic pilot. You're hypnotized. Right. Listening well, I, to radio stations, watching movies, it's forms of magnified concentration, actually. I, I do realize that there are certain that there's a certain amount of time that you spend on the planet that is just in pure autopilot mode. For instance, right. the remote control for my TV set downstairs uh -huh. is different than the remote control for my TV set in my bedroom. Right. And every single night I go in there and hit the mute button instead of the volume button because I sit down and watch an hour's worth of TV in the living room and then I go up to my bedroom and turn the TV set up and my thumb knows where to go. This is why Adam couldn't be hypnotized in his mind because he's already in a He's already in what we call environmental yeah. hypnosis yeah. and there are people walking around. That well, are this is why hypnotized. like when you climb into a rent-a-car, yeah. you yeah. turn on the wipers when you think you're turning on the headlights for mm -hmm. the first 15 times. Subconscious conditioned response, actually. Yeah, but it has to be that way because yeah. if it wasn't that way, Way, you would spend an hour trying to get in your house every night. You'd be fumbling with the keys. You wouldn't know where the light switch is. You know, or you I mean, never learn how to play the piano or something. Just think, Drew, and nobody knows this better than Drew. Think how refined you um, you've made the the process of leaving the studio every night. <laughs> for instance, I mean, how long does it take you to get in your car, crank up the opera, fire up the Volvo, and hit the freeway every night? You know what I mean? I mean, think you've seconds. whittled, you've <laughs> shaved seconds off of that every night. Yes. And, and if you put yourself in another location and in another vehicle, uh, you'd add five minutes right. to it. 
All right. So what's your point here, though? Andy? I have no real point. <laughs> i got to kill two hours a night. Oh, okay. That's my point. Okay. But, but anyway, folks, um, hypnosis is definitely a real legitimate therapy. It's been in practice for hundreds of years, started in the Western world with Dr. Mesmer in France, but actually goes back to ancient Greek uh, times. You know there was a Greek god, the god of hypnos, the god of sleep and the alleviation of pain. Hmm. Right. Which uh, actually happened a thousand years ago. <laughs> All right. Hey, but you know, I had hypnotized you the other year privately. Do you remember that? He claims he was not hypnotized. No, no, you came in to my office. Right. And you had some goals. There was a new TV show ready to come out. Right. There were certain fears and self-doubts and right. certain things that you wanted to be able to overcome so that you could do the very best you can. You right. Did it. You did and it. And I think that it did work for you on the private therapy. Because oh. look at what's happened. Look at the show. Look at the look immense at, success. Yeah. Well, look at your confidence. Look at the calmness. Oh, you're uh, the one that did, did instilled this in him? I created this monster? Uh, actually, yeah, we well, gave you suggestions to sleep better at night, too, yeah. when you're ready for sleep. Actually, I'd like you to take a little of the confidence and the calmness back because I'm about ready to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too confident and uh, too relaxed now doing uh, doing a His national radio I, program. I argue with him about this. His perception, though, he was not hypnotized. And I, we, you know, people sometimes what? distort that perception. Now, you know why yeah. people have the mis conception well, that they're... lose control. Well, the fact is that, that <laughs> just because you remember everything doesn't mean you weren't in a right, receptive state. Right, right. I mean, that's brainwave activity, which stems from our conscious right. brainwave But not activity. if I'm remembering the uh, secretary turning off the coffee pot in the next room and stuff like that. That doesn't count. Well, no, I didn't even remember that. So right. I think you must have been a little astro projection. <laughs> here, here, leave my ass out of this. Here's uh, my point. Huh. When I uh, First off, Tom is very good at what he does. There, There's no doubt about it. But I have this certain um, lucidity that uh -huh. causes me difficulty. Like, for instance, if I'm sitting down watching TV and um, the street light comes on on the window behind me, my head flips around. I mean, I'll jump because because I, I, I notice everything. I hear everything. Right. And, and that's how I am, except for when I'm talking to someone face to face, because right. then I'm noticing something else that's going on sure. okay. somewhere else. OK, but. When you hypnotize me, you got right. me into a very uh, nice state of relaxation, right. and you told me all the things uh, that I wanted to hear, and I think I think it was definitely positive. I don't right. think if you would have told me to cluck like a chick and I would have done it, because I don't think I was in uh, that deep. Yeah, well, a lot of people have a misconception that you lose control, whereas under hypnosis, if your magnification, your focus and concentration is eight times stronger than normal, it would stand to reason that you have more focused control than ever before. Right. So, so you wouldn't do anything which is against your life script. Plus, not everyone goes. Yeah, but I'm talking about whacking off on the air every night. It's not against my life script to well, cluck like a chicken. Right. Believe right. me, that's but, nothing. But you would do it if you wanted to do it. You have a certain fear of losing control, and I know, and I, I've seen that with you. Just like with the guys on the morning show, Kevin and Bean. There's a certain fear of losing control, which is fine. But what I'm trying to say is, un under hypnosis, you really don't lose control, but your focus and magnification of suggestions are concentrated. Right. It's almost as though a suggestion isn't just reaching your conscious mind. Cognitively, you know what you want in life. It's getting that subconscious to go with the program for you to be in control of your mind instead of your mind dictating your emotions and your control. Right. Right. A okay. witness to your thoughts. So uh, you should so, be in control of your mind instead of your mind telling you. Yeah, how many people walk around getting angry, getting upset, getting unhappy, giving themselves negative suggestions, right, walking around? I'm, I'm getting pissed off yeah. now. Drew? Yeah. No, I was just kidding. Oh. Uh, All right. Well, hold on, Tom. Let me jump in for a second yeah. here. But you weren't in a deep trance to hallucinate. That's exactly why you, you uh, were not there. I was, I was, uh, I was under, and uh, every one of his suggestions took. But um, I don't think I would be a good subject if you were doing a stage show right. and you wanted somebody to entertain the crowd. Only 10 or 15% of the population go that deep the first time. They okay, well, time. hopefully we've found that uh, percentile tonight because yeah. uh, Gina and is it uh, Jamie? Gina and Jamie, we have a few volunteers outside that we're what? going to bring back in that we pre-hypnotize. Right. That's another confusing situation. When people see someone go into a trance instantly, they, they think, how can that be? It's, it's so uncomprehendable. The fact is the person was given a post of not suggestion. And it was to go back in, yeah. yes. To go back no, in, I, I can look. Uh, Drew used to. Drew, you did this in high school, did yeah, you not? I used to scare yeah. thing. Drew, do uh, anything to get laid in high school? No. When I was when I was like uh, twelve, I watched the stage show and I thought, right. let me try that. I tried. I could do it. Yeah. 
And here I was, I'd entertain my friends until I was like 18 or 19. And then finally I thought, ooh, what am I, what am I messing around with here? Just, yeah, a- absolutely. In fact, if you're going to practice hypnosis, hypnotizing people, I recommend that you have some training. Go to a clinic, an institute it's, it's of a, higher hey, learning. Hey, could you, could you hypnotize Drew tonight and get him interested in the show? No. Oh, I have, well, that's kind of a hypnomeric. Yeah, I, have, I have to I'm want sorry, to do I it. I have to want to do it. You know, I can't do everything. Yeah. Maybe medicine might you, help. Yeah, you, can't go, you, can't, you can't force him to go against every fiber no, in his soul, no. can you? That'd be fighting against his life script he won't uh, do be that. like uh it, it, we'd probably get him to uh, kill his family first but you know what i want to attempt to that. show you folks and to show you two guys this evening is an age regression having someone go back to a childhood memory and reliving that experience mm-hmm. again going back in time our minds are so powerful amazing right? it really is amazing and i show also past life regression whether you believe it or not sometimes our problems might All stem right. from some other well past. these are uh, these are things we're going to uh, get into tonight yeah. and and tom um quickly yes sir Give us um, three of your major hypnotic achievements. The things that are really going to make people uh, sitting in Minneapolis say, this guy's uh, a force to be reckoned with. Well, my number one achievement was this last July where I went to Taiwan. I was actually the first uh, hypnotherapist from America into the culture in Taiwan back in 1994. I created a method called interlingual hypnotic transinduction. I hypnotized people through interpreters in foreign languages. And I hypnotized people in Mandarin Chinese through an interpreter, Dr. Wang. <laughs> oh, actually, Jesus Christ. I set a world's record. I hypnotized 3,800 people in 1995 at a world's record show. But, but what I really did was I saved some people's lives. I worked with people that had major stress disorders, suicidal, post-traumatic stress syndromes, multiple personality. But the biggest achievement was July of this year, and I'm going to show you folks this and show you guys this. I was awarded a plaque from the Minister of Defense of Taiwan using hypnosis with criminology, helping to create some kind of conclusion to the, one of the biggest crimes in Taiwan history. Now, when I talked to you about this about a year and a half ago, you're telling me it was top secret. Right. I'm not saying exactly what we did. And what I did with the team I worked with in Taiwan, but what we were able to do was use hypnosis in a way... What are you scared? We got some double agents uh, listening? We got a bunch of stone 15-year-olds. But the way we were able to use hypnosis was to really save some people's lives that actually might have been (coughs) prosecuted for crimes they never committed. Mm. How many people are in prison for crimes maybe they didn't commit? Oh, they all deserve it. So anyway, so uh, that was one of my big accomplishments. Also, uh, hypnotizing my wife to give birth to our daughter seven years ago was wonderful. The biggest. <laughs> you best mean you thing humped her while she was under? No, no, during labor, actually. Oh, during labor. Yes, without anesthesia. Really? But I did hypnotize a gentleman six years ago named Jeff Loudon in Minneapolis who wanted to stop smoking. Three years ago, he survived a brain tumor operation, two surgeries. He had five percent chance of surviving the surgery, and he had one year to live. He survived it, and the surgeon said the reason you survived is because you had stopped smoking three years earlier and the size of your brain had shrunk enough for us to remove the tumor so to me that's like a real rewarding story i, I helped the guy stop smoking and it saves his life from a uh, tumor so not only is there an entertainment facet to this hypnosis but there's a uh, actual uh, medical uh, benefits to reap it's very therapeutic from hypnosis. lots of chemicals true doesn't activated. like it because it doesn't involve up john and other major drug manufacturers that's true yes it's true drew. yeah but uh, dr drew you know that if your mind can produce some wonderful healing chemicals within your oh. body and endorphins mm-hmm. what a wonderful gift to give yourself to create a chemical balance Absolutely. within your mind all right so we're going to have uh, people to uh, hypnotize uh, meanwhile it's like to uh, digress for a second here sure. which is something uh, you're big into and and say uh, tomorrow's trash day okay and i wish you could hypnotize my a goddamn garbage man. <laughs> I had the greatest conversation with a guy who was working with me today on my house. I said, "Listen, there's tons of trash around here because I renovated my house." I said, right. "I said, we, uh, let's put it all in garbage bags." So there's five garbage bags, and it's sitting out by that one big plastic can. Yeah. And I said, "He's. They're not going to pick up the garbage bags because all they pick up is the is the can." And not only do they uh, only use that robotic arm, but they actually have a stick with a hook on it now, so they don't have to do anything. They don't slow down. I think they just they eat crap and make love in that thing. They must. I, they probably use that stick for everything. But the point is, is we got into this big thing, and I was thinking, how could we get these garbage bags into this garbage truck? It's not enough that I get re- reamed in taxes. They get one can that they'll pick up. So he said, what if I take the garbage bags up to the roof of the garage, which has kind of a parapet on it. The truck stops right in front of the garage. You go out there and distract him. Create some sort of diversion fire. I'll toss the bags off the top of the roof and into the hole in the top of the truck. I thought, this is diabolical. This is brilliant. And then I realized, it's like like the great escape is going on in my house. 
I'm trying. I'm trying to. Uh, I'm, I got to tunnel garbage out because the garbage man won't pick up the garbage. And then some other guy comes by and he goes, "Yeah, I had the same problem. You got to give him twenty bucks. You grease his pump. He'll get out of the truck for twenty. And I'm thinking, I got to bribe the effing garbage man to pick up the garbage. I'm 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 uh, having a candlelight vigil out front of my house tonight. I don't know if you or the listeners want to join me. I'm going to stand out there, and as God is my witness, I am going to command that He take my garbage bags tomorrow. And if He doesn't, uh, so help me, I'll load up my uh, Nissan with uh, plastic explosives. And uh, I don't know, do we have an embassy here? I'm driving it right down the right up the ass of City Hall, and I'm taking the whole thing out. So uh, keep an eye on the news tomorrow. There could be some okay. serious visual anti-justice going on. All right. All right. I'm All glad right. I got that out of my system. That's good. Now, right. now you feel a lot better, though. All right. So a calls, uh, Tom Silver's here. Yes. No, no. I'll tell you what we're doing. Oh, no calls. We're breaking We're breaking early. All right. Because uh, we got a lot of um, shenanigans to get to. Tom is going to uh, bring in his guests. He's going to uh, quickly put them under. Right. And then um, I'll have my way with them orally <laughs> while uh, Tom uh, has some sort of past life regression. Hey, uh, with them. Now, Adam, can I give out my toll-free number? Number of case anyone okay. has any questions. Plug away. Plug away. I, if anyone has any questions about hypnosis or any of my self help programs, my phone number is one eight 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 Mind Power M I N D P W R one triple eight Mind Power. Also, you can uh, catch me on the internet. My webpage is at www.tomsilver.com. Thanks for the plug. I appreciate. Oh, we will. Yeah, and now we'll pleasure. show some great, wonderful, amazing things with the subconscious mind in the next few minutes, folks. We will be back. <laughs> Hi, this is Janine Garofalo, and if you've ever wondered if there's people that are way worse off than you, listen to Loveline. Mm. All right, sorry, I thought there was more. Uh, Tom Silver, the uh, world's greatest hypnotist, is uh, here, and uh, we have our subjects. It is Loveline, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191, fax number 310-854-4455. Adam Carroll, Dr. Drew. Jamie and Gina are both here. They are, uh, uh, ladies, uh, please lean up to the mics. I, I know it uh, is a difficult and arduous task. Uh, perhaps when you're done with our guests here tonight, you could hypnotize um, some one. of the folks from Westwood 2. Uh, we refuse to call this dump Westwood 1 anymore. Okay. And convince them to get chairs that are actually uh, above sea level. <laughs> Uh, Westwood One, everyone. Uh, world, uh, home of the world's tallest mic stands and the world's shortest chairs. But aren't our chairs nice? Do they make money at this place? Nice. Cur- courtesy of a, some, a listener in Illinois, send them to us. Oh, oh really? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, is, if, if there's anything that's not a piece of S in this entire studio, it's because a listener sent it in. But anyway, ladies, as difficult as it may be, please uh, speak into the mic. Uh, Jamie, we'll start with you. How old are you? I am 20. Poor Jamie. How tall are you, Jamie? Five. One. Five one. Why don't you barely? She's got her chin resting right on top of the console. <laughs> oh, God bless this place. I'd, I'd ask you ladies to go ahead and adjust your chairs and bring them up, but they're all broken. Well, and these things can cost up to $80 a chair. So, okay, well, it's God, this nice place is a dump. Can't you put chairs in an effing studio? Oh, my God. I've been yelling about this for six months. A year. All right. I'm sorry. Jamie, you're how old? I'm 20. 20. And do you yeah. attend uh, college? Do you work? Um, I'm a certified massage therapist. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to know. I got her first trick. uh, (laughs) Okay. Hey, now, if you guys want to come up with suggestions while they're hypnotized, feel free, too. Oh, please. Drew, why don't you make that your work? Don't worry. I'll protect you. Make that your work for the year, please. Adam, you can sit back and... I will uh, sit back and enjoy the festivity. So you massage people uh, for a living? Yeah. Yeah, so I it, work at a spa. That's a form of prostitution, is it not? No, it's not. I'm just trying to stir up some controversy. It could be for some people, but not for myself. Have you ever had a man uh, achieve an erection while you were massaging him? No. Really? No, not mm-hmm. yet. Because if I was naked and in a towel and lying on my belly and being caressed for more than 20 minutes, I think uh, no no amount of hypnotism <laughs> in the world could keep that thing down. Well, see, also, you know, the, the man's laying there completely naked with just a towel draped uh, over this it. Is, uh, so it would be kind of... It'd be kind of yeah, scary you, to I stand didn't w- there with the woman, you know, fully clothed. Yeah, I, but I didn't want to get an erection when I was riding the bus on the way to school when I was 15. It still <laughs> happened. <laughs> Sweatpants and all. All right, Gina, how old are you and uh, what do you do? 23 and nothing that glamorous. <laughs> I work at, um, well, Home Depot and... Oh, Sam. now we're talking. A woman with what department you working in? I was just there today. Um, Oh, really? Chairs Bastards. Man. I ordered a ceiling fan from them once. It <laughs> never came in. 
not my fault. All right. So, uh, anyway, woman after my own heart working over at the Home Depot. So, uh, Jamie and Gina are both here, and they're both young, they're both nubile, and because this is radio, they are good looking. And I don't mean, to, don't take that the wrong way. I'm saying I have to explain how attractive you are to the home listeners. And, and they, they are attractive. Would you, would you agree, Drew? Yes. All right, what are you going to say? Thank no, you. but no, they are Thank very, you. they're very attractive. And it just makes it that much more um, uh, tantalizing to listen to. Sure. So, Tom, uh, yes. because yes, you've, you've done this before. Yes, sir. Why don't you uh, go ahead and, and begin the festivities? Okay. First of all, ladies, are you, are you hypnotized right now? No. Okay. Have you ever been hypnotized before this evening? No. No. Okay, so it's a new experience for you. Yes. Now, I did a little uh, hypnosis in the back just to test your suggestibility and how deep we can get you hypnotized. And I just want you to tell the listeners, what did the experience feel like being hypnotized? What was the feelings of being hypnotized? It was very relaxing. Yeah. My ass hurt when I was hypnotized by Tom. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I've got, oh, well, I've got a wonderful tape that I like to play of that. Oh, please, I I'll, brought it with me. Oh, the payment. Oh, it's great. I'll, I'll, put the, I'll bring the payment in tomorrow. Please. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm giving Drew the tape. Oh, my God. This, oh, is, a good this one. is sensational. Got, and, and I want the listeners to hear this because this is a gentleman that says he wasn't hypnotized. And then let the listeners God be the judge. You, oh, yes. <laughs> this is a what, glorious day. What tape are you talking well, about? I'm not going You're to about the morning show? I'm not going to mention. I just want... I have a tape here. All right. I'll cut your mic off and throw your ass right okay. back out in the okay. hip mobile. <laughs> I'll give you the tape, Adam. No, you've got no, no, it. No, no, no. Okay. Now, anyway, listen, girls, I want to rehypnotize you again. Will you give me permission to hypnotize you? Yeah. Okay. You're in complete control, folks. No one can hypnotize you without uh, your conscious permission. So what I want you to do is place your hands on your lap and cross your legs. Place your feet flat on the floor if you can. And what we're going to do is we're just going to reinduce a hypnotic trance. I've pre-hypnotized you folks, you two girls, and given you the post-hypnotic suggestion to become instantly hypnotized. Look down at your hands now. And I want you to give me permission to hypnotize you. Nod your head yes. Good. Focus your attention on your breathing now. And with your hands resting on your lap, imagine a feeling of warmth radiating from your hands to your legs. And I want you now to take two deep breaths in and out. With each and every exhale, think of relaxing your mind and body. On your second exhale, close your eyes. Listen to the words I'm presenting to you to allow you to enter into a wonderful, deep, hypnotic sleep. You're in control. And with your eyes closed, as soon as I touch your shoulders, your head will drop down. You'll enter back into a deep, hypnotic sleep, going down ten times deeper sleep than when I previously hypnotized you. Head dropping down, sleep, deeply hypnotized, down like a lion. Head dropping down, sleep. Every part of your body relax, bathe in relaxation. If I lift your hand up, it drops right back down. Your hands and body are 100% relaxed. And if I lift your hand up, look what happens. You guys see that? Look at this relaxation. It's Every amazing. part of your body relax. Most people can't even get this relaxed, even if they want to consciously. Being in a hypnotic sleep for about 15 minutes is about five or six hours of a deep no, natural sleep. No, 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 that is such a load of crap. No, it's true. It's that is deep such sleep. crap. How he, did Adam get in a deep sleep? Adam went really deep, and the hypnosis worked great for him. He's just one of those people that just want everyone to think he can't live. Listen, control. if I, if I <laughs> could get my mouth that close to my lap, <laughs> I'd quit yeah. the show immediately. Yeah. I really would. Yeah, We have a good circus he can go and work at. Okay, deeply hypnotized. Now, Adam, we're going to show you some creativity. Okay, people that are <laughs> hypnotized. Nice. When I touch you, you'll respond to the suggestions. Each time I give you a suggestion, you'll perform perfectly with a great imagination. First suggestion is on the count of three. I want you to sit up in your chair with your eyes closed. On the count of three, imagine that you're watching the world's funniest movie you've ever seen in your entire life. On the count of three, laughing out loud, hysterically funny, the funniest movie you've ever seen. On the count of three, one, two, three. Sit up in your chairs, laughing out loud now. This movie's so funny. It's ten times funnier. It's a hundred times funnier. It's a thousand times funnier. It's a that's so funny. Jamie, what just happened? What just happened, Jamie? It's I don't know, but it's cracking It's out. a great movie. And now he'll drop him down. Now sleep back into a deep hypnotic sleep instantly, back into a deep hypnotic sleep. I'm going to show you something, some creativity right now. Jamie told me before I hypnotized her that one of her favorite celebrities was a gal named Jenny McCarthy. So right now. Uh, enjoy it, uh, by the way. <laughs> first time touching. Jamie, when I count to three, you're going to sit up in your chair, you're going to open your eyes, you're going to use your imagination. You are Jenny McCarthy in every way. You're here at the radio station. Just to answer some questions, speak about your life. You're very excited to be here. A wonderful opportunity. A lot of friends and people have been giving you support for all these years are on the radio listening to you. When I count to three, the person I'm touching, sit up in your chair, Jenny McCarthy, in every way you see and feel and think like her, you are her now on the count of three. One, two. Three, sit up in your chair. So uh, tonight our guest on Loveline is the voluptuous Jenny McCarthy. Welcome, Jenny. Hi, guys. Um, congratulations on all the recent success. Yeah, I've, 
I've come a long way since Playboy. You certainly have, and um, I didn't want to bring it up, but since you did, what about that? Um, there's rumors that they're offering you large sums of money to do another photo spread. Uh, are you going to take them up on it? I'm not sure. It, it was so much fun. I mean, I love to be naked, and uh, that's all there is to it. You enjoy being naked. Yeah, I really do. And uh, do you enjoy the process of uh, men taking pictures of you while you're naked, or just the naked part? Just the naked part. Uh, how many weeks yeah. do you give the TV show? Uh, I know the ratings aren't what they could be. Um, yeah, I wish the ratings would go up because uh, I think it's a hilarious show. You do? Oh, it's such a blast to do. Mm -hmm. Just uh, totally be myself and uh, have people enjoy it. Right. And uh, what? Um, who are you sleeping with currently? You have a uh, you have a man in your life? Well, do we have to keep it a secret? No, we don't. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, who, are you dating anybody? Um, no, not at the time. No mm -hmm. one's serious. Nobody? Just sort of dating around? Yeah. Sleeping with a lot of guys? Um, I don't care to reveal that. Okay. Ever had any <laughs> lesbian love? Um, yeah. What about Adam Carolla, host of, uh, oh, yes? Huh? Just skim right past that. What about Adam Carolla, uh, host of Loveline? Any, uh, sexual attraction there, Jenny? Um, yeah, you know, but, uh, Okay. Now we're getting somewhere, yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 In a big way, huh? Um, no, I would not say that. Small. No, okay. <laughs> Small. <laughs> so you've been talking to Drew. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, Tom, uh, make her kiss her lap again, please. You're dropping out sleep. When I count to three, you'll open your eyes, Jamie. You'll sit up in your chair. Oh, you, oh. you are Jamie again, but every time you hear Adam start to speak on the microphone, you're going to want to stop everything. You want to tell the listeners just how mad you are about him. He's just wild. He's the greatest guy. You're sexually attracted to him. He's just, a, he's just the best man, and I mean, just the sexual the hormones just come right out of his body, it seems like. Every time he speaks, you're going to tell him how much you just admire him and like him. You just can't get enough. Every time he talks, more and more excited about him. Jamie, on the count of three, one, two, three. Sit up in your chair. Well, it's uh, Love Line. I'm Adam Corolla, that is Dr. Drew. Tonight's guest is a uh, stock car driver, Tom Silver, the uh, only uh, Jewish stock car driver on uh, currently working the Southern Circuit. J Jamie, what are you looking at? <clears throat> Adam. Why are you looking at him? Tell the listeners. He's incredibly hot. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what do you think? The, oh, dark eyebrows and dark eyes. And True, I got one big yeah. brow. Oh, you certainly do. When you hear his voice, what's it make you feel like? <sighs> kind of hot. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Well, totally. talk to her, Adam. <laughs> so I'm, I'm in awe. I'm a, you should have hypnotized me to no, prepare me for this. No one's ever spoken to him like that. Yeah, You've man. never heard this before. No. Oh. Tell no. the listeners what Everyone you really think of him. It. Tell them. Tell Last tell chick who came on to me was Jenny McCarthy. Oh. Yeah, she's all right. Maybe we can get a little threesome going. Yeah. She's yeah, what do, you, what do you think of me? Um, I, your voice. Mm -hmm. It's just awesome. You, you like the awesome. nasally drone? What would you do to me if we were alone together? Um, oh. Well, you see, I just, I don't think I can say that. Really? On the air. It's too embarrassing. Yeah. Well, not embarrassing. It's just not something that everybody should hear. But I, I, it's safe to say that you would uh, attack me sexually? Definitely. And, Definitely. And that the lovemaking would go on for hours or... Oh, or hours on end. Or, How would you rate uh, him 1 to 100, 100 being the most sexiest guy in the world? 110. Oh, that's great. I'm, I'm even higher than the scale hey, allows. Sleep, deeply hypnotized. Oh, isn't that nice, Anne? Isn't that nice? Yeah. Oh, she's attractive. She hypnotized Anne over there, so she doesn't shoot me the stink eye every time First I come in the I'm studio. Touching, Jamie, you'll stay in a deep hypnotic trance right now. Gina, deeply hypnotized. Every part of your body relax from the top of your head down to the tips of your toes. Let's try a little creativity, a little imagination. When I count to three, Gina, you'll open your eyes. You'll sit up in your chair. You are Kathy Lee Gifford. You're here this evening to talk about your husband, about the affair that went on, to talk about... Uh, the clothes and the situation with uh, the child labor laws and all that. When I count to three, you'll sit up in your chair. The person I'm touching, you're Kathy Lee Gifford, Gina, in every way. Very excited to be here tonight on the radio. One, two, three. Eyes open. Sit up in your chair. Well, welcome back to Loveline. Tonight's guest, Kathy Lee Gifford. Welcome, Kathy. Hello. How are you guys? I'm uh, glad you came on the show tonight and uh, frankly surprised <laughs> after the recent controversy, what with Frank. Yeah, that's got to be difficult as a uh, as a woman who preaches uh, family um, uh, family togetherness and and uh, and, and values. Uh, the fact that your your um, husband would go out and screw around with a, um, a flight attendant's got to be horribly humiliating to you. It's terribly devastating. What do you want to tell the listeners about that situation, Kathy? Well, it's actually it's it's a private thing that's 
happening to me. So I, I'd rather, you know, keep it. But if you could have any advice to uh, other uh, married women, uh, what would it be? You just, you have to, you have to keep the trust there. You have to keep the communication going and don't be blind. Mm -hmm. Don't be blind. And yeah. You got a little Don't complacent. Lie to yourself, definitely. What about these allegations that your clothing line was uh, made in Honduras by uh, uh, retarded three-year-olds? That's terrible. That's, that's terrible. Uh, isn't I... it true that you profited uh, from the sweat of the uh, Honduran never, people? Never. Well, that's well, what I read. I would never do that. Well, how uh, how can you defend if any, that? If anything went on, it was totally without my knowledge. Well, sure, you turned a blind eye to the plight of the Honduran people. A blind eye. Never. I would never do that. No. Well, certainly you I, knew what was going on. Did no. you not know where the clothes were coming from? I knew where the clothes were coming from, but I had no idea that that, that they were treating the, the children that way, that that it was under such terrible conditions. I, I would never allow anything like that, especially I would never put my name on anything like that. Okay. All right. I believe her, Drew. Oh, yeah, I believe her, too. <laughs> Well, thank you, Kathy. Sleep, head dropping down, back into a deep hypnotic sleep. I don't, your body relax. Tom, I'd like I'd like some good uh, simulated orgasm. Okay, I, I really would. Okay, the person I'm touching, when I count to three, you'll open your eyes. You Why are, are going to stand up, and I want you to shake Adam's hand. And as you start to shake his hand, you're going to feel a wonderful feeling, an orgasmic feeling, an orgasmic experience. And the faster Adam shakes your hand, the more <laughs> sexier and greater the feeling experience is going to be. We all know that orgasms stem from our mind, folks. And you're now going to have a wonderful mental freedom. The very next time I ask you now to open your eyes, you're going to shake Adam's hand and have a wonderful, sexy feeling. Your entire body is going to feel it, and you're going to tingle and just feel this wonderful feeling. The faster he shakes, the more greater the feeling experience on the count of three. One, two, three. Stand up now. Hi, I Gina. I want to thank you for coming on the show tonight. Thank you very much. What do you feel right now, Gina? Appreciate it. It was nice great. You. And the wonderful. faster you shake, the greater the feeling. The feeling now getting stronger. My leg's moving now, Tom. How, how do you feel, Gina? I really good. Really? Shake even faster now. I really want to thank you. And now for start to reach a show. full orgasmic feeling right now. <laughs> Let it out, baby. Just once in my life, I want to hear. Just let it. on a scream on the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> How do you feel now? Outstanding. Is this one of the best feelings experiences you've ever had? Oh, yes. And what do you think of Adam? You're superb. Would you let him shake your hand again? Always. Always. Oh, just feel it again even faster now, Adam. Feel it. Tell the listeners what you're feeling. Yes, Nick. <laughs> okay, now, Adam, will you stop, right, stop, 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 yeah. stop. Now, ha have a seat. Sit down in your chair. Right. Drop your head down now. Sleep. Head dropping down deeply. Hypnotized. Look, and Adam, you, you've right. got a girl telling you how attracted she is to your voice. You have another girl giving you an orgasmic handshake. This is wonderful, Tom. Do you, you want to give okay? the 800 number out again? <laughs> I knew he'd let me. Toll-free number 1-888-MINDPOWER, M-I-N-D-P-W-R. This is some of the creativity and imagination with the subconscious. My motivation is helping people change their lives, taking control of your life your health and happiness and success all right we uh, have to go to break uh, drew turn the tv on and Ann, get me something from the fridge <laughs> i think you need a cold uh, shower adam <laughs> <laughs> it's part of a ritual i don't care if it was simulated or not all right uh when we come back uh tom silver will be here we will uh possibly bring in a couple uh, you hypnotized uh, five uh, yeah we've got some more volunteers five so let's folks bring, bring them in, in and we'll take some phone calls and uh, perhaps have them uh, think they're uh, dr ruth or something let's do that absolutely oh this is genius all right we'll be back This is Nev Campbell, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. All right. God bless everybody. Tom Silver, master of hypnosis, is here tonight. Um, we have Pam, Jeff, and Colleen in here. This is uh, the three remaining uh, hypnotists that Tom put under uh, some time ago, actually, uh, before the show. And the way uh, it works is uh, he spends some time, he uh, gets them into this uh, state, and then uh, brings them out of it and can bring them back and forth um, as, uh, as, as he, as he uh, wishes. Uh, Tom cannot, uh, boy, we're uh, set, a, set a can short, huh? Yeah, but it'll work out. It'll work out. Okay, well, you should be able to hear everything that's going on in here, although you will not hear the callers, I believe. But uh, anyway, phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LFE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. 
Tom, why don't you put our guests under, and uh, then we'll take some phone calls. Okay. Now, we have three volunteers here this evening that I had pre-hypnotized about an hour ago. I spent about, though, 15, 20 minutes with you All right, folks. Tom. Covered all that. Put them under. Okay. Okay. Let's get to the, midi- to the nitty-gritty, to the meat of the situation, as Adam would like it. Place your hands on your lap. What we're going to do is we're going to in- induce a hypnotic trance now. I want you to close your eyes. And with your eyes closed, I want you to give yourself permission to allow me to hypnotize you. I'm going to use my eyes as an object of fixation, a focal point to induce deep hypnosis. In a moment, I'm going to come up to each and every one of you. I'm going to touch you on your shoulder. When I do, you'll look into my eyes. I'll say the word sleep, and you'll enter into a deep hypnotic sleep. Close your eyes now. First time touching, open your eyes, look into my eyes. And now sleep, head dropping down, deeply hypnotized. Five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Deeper sleep, relax. First time touching, open your eyes. Look into my eyes. Sleep! Head dropping down. Instantly, out like a light. Every part of your body relax from the top of your head down to the tips of your toes. Deeply yeah, hypnotized. Yeah. First time touching, open your eyes. Look into my eyes. Sleep! Way down. Five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Kind of a mild shock induction to induce back into a hypnotic sleep. People who are hypnotized, as I count from five down to zero, every part of your body relaxes. Five, four, three, two, one, and zero. You are deeply hypnotized. Every suggestion I give you, you are now going to use your imagination and your creativity. The very first suggestion is when I count to three, you're going to open your eyes, you're going to sit up in your chairs. You are all your favorite celebrities. Whoever is your favorite actor or actress or celebrity or singer or dancer, on the count of three, you are that person. You're here at the radio station, and you're going to act and think and project in your mind yourself as your favorite celebrity in every way on the count of three sitting up in your chairs very excited to be here your favorite celebrity in the world one two three eyes open sit up in your chairs well it's a uh, tour de force we have here on love line tonight uh, three of the biggest uh, celebrities in hollywood have graced the love line studio uh i'll tell you uh, their their accomplish- accomplishments are read like a who's who of uh, hollywood greats and uh, let's just have our first uh, celebrity uh, introduce herself hi i'm jody foster and our second celebrity Mel Gibson. And, of course, our third. Jonathan Winters. Jonathan Winters. Johnny, uh, could you speak uh, into the mic a little closer? Yes. All right. You guys uh, don't mind if we uh, take some phone calls, do you? And you could all uh, help us out. Uh, let me just write this down. Uh, Jody, Mel, and, uh, of course, uh, the great Jonathan Winters. Uh, such a treat. Uh, I'm a big fan of your work, really? Jonathan. Yeah. Hey, could you do a little of the uh, grandma character? I love that character. The old grandma. Great bit. Please, John, could you please? It would really make my day if you could do that. No, you're not going to do that? All right. Uh, haul your old fat ass out of the studio. Then. All right. Uh, Terry. Yes. You're 23. Yes. You're on uh, Loveline with uh, Jody Foster, Mel Gibson, and the uh, great yet reluctant Jonathan Winters. What is your question? I'm just wondering why I um, sometimes have no sex drive. Hmm. Uh, are you on medication? No, well, I just started um, taking an antidepressant. Which one? Paxil. Uh, that will shut down your libido like nothing else. It but has this the... has been going on since July. Have you been depressed since July? Um, no. Well, I'm not exactly sure. Well, something must have caused them to put you on Paxil, right? Well, I went in and I said that that I have been having like um, signs of depression. Okay. Well, I'm sure they they confirmed that. And one of the one of the significant signs of, of depression is things like lack of libido. Okay, because this has happened in the uh, past. But they didn't put her on the Paxil uh, because she was depressed, really. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's an antidepressant. Here we go. It's just, just like last night. She went in complaining of being depressed, uh, so they gave her an antidepressant. It wasn't uh, because of the depression that they gave her the Paxil. You understand? Got Jody, it. do you get the uh, logic in this? Yeah, it reminds me of the uh, sprinkler in the stomach. Oh. Last night. Yes, oh, yeah, yes, very good. Jody, you're, uh, it, it, uh, I got to tell you, Jody, I am flattered to have such a, a big celebrity be a fan of the show and even quote part of the show from last night. Jody, what was your favorite movie that you starred in? What was a, your favorite movie? Contact. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so the, the latest and the greatest. What about the allegations that you're lesbian, Jody? <laughs> Let's get right to it. Is there anything to that at all? I'd rather not get into that. <laughs> okay, we'll take that as a yes. <laughs> So uh, the uh, the Paxil kills the libido. Well, and, and and so can depression. And you know we could dig into Terry a little bit and see what else is going on. Yeah. Maybe contributing to depression. There may be some dynamic issues that are affecting. Uh, Mel Gibson, no problem uh, with libido uh, on your end, is there, mate? Oh uh, no, not a problem. How many kids do you have now? Uh, six. Oh my goodness! Wow, 
Wow, that's he a lot. He travels of... with his kids. That, that, that's great. What are some tips you, you can give us uh, being a parent with the, the busy schedule that you have? Um, I don't know. Lock him up in a closet or something like that. <laughs> well, Mel. He's, he's lost a bit of his accent, too. Did you know? <laughs> Jonathan uh, Winters, for uh, one of the uh, premier comedians of our uh, generation, um, you're, uh, you're, you're strangely quiet tonight. I'm enjoying myself. You are? Yes. Uh, you couldn't regale, regale us with any of your uh, uh, comic gems, I any of the problem. great characters? I, I heard you do a great imitation of Adam, actually. <laughs> yeah, could you do just a little bit of me, please? I don't want to scare you. Go ahead. I, I'm sitting down. I'm grumpy. <laughs> you always seem like you're grumpy. Hey, did you did you have to uh, channel a surly Jonathan Winters? Uh, <laughs> she, she was she was she was, she was First imitating oh, you. She's doing me. Yeah. Sleep. yeah. Oh, yeah. Deep, deep that hypnotic you. sleep. Oh, I didn't know First that was me. Touching, I'm grumpy. Hypnotized. That's you. Huh? Everyone else now. I want you to close your eyes. Drop your heads down. Heads dropping down. Sleep. Going into a deep hypnotic sleep. The person I'm touching deeply hypnotized. When I count to three, you'll open your eyes. You are Dr. Ruth, a sex expert. Only the person I'm touching, you're here to talk about sex and how great it is and how people should have more of it. Safe sex. On the count of three, Dr. Ruth in every way. One, two, three. Sit up in your chair. Hi, Dr. Ruth. How are well, you? How are you doing? Welcome to Loveline, Dr. Ruth. It is a thrill. Good to be here. Wow, you've, Ooh, uh, you've been working on, um, yeah, she got the Hooked on Phonics or something, or the uh, Dialogue Plus cassette. You've, you've almost uh, all but lost your accent, Dr. Sorry. Ruth. <laughs> We're going to take another call. Could you help us out with that, Dr. Hopefully. Ruth? It would, be a, it would be an honor. Uh, Cameron. Hello. You're 16. Hi. What's going on? Oh, gee. I just first want to say that next time you're handing out those handshakes, I'll take a few of them, too. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you, it, uh, my penis was under a trance during Dang. that whole thing. <laughs> uh, we're here with uh, Master uh, Car Detailer, Tom Silver, and, of course, uh, Dr. Ruth. Good old Dr. Ruth. Do you have any questions for Dr. Ruth while we have her? Yeah, how about, um, let's see, the reason I'm really calling is because um, I really feel like I'm not, thinking like a normal 16 year old would you know it's kind of weird um instead of um like going to school and flirting with the guys you know i've got to go downstairs and flirt with the teachers you know or you know instead of sitting back you know drooling over some prime time sitcom you know i'm playing with myself watching david letterman you know it's too strange and it's like a I'm really into these older guys. Do you know what I mean? Right. You're not, okay. you're not actually acting on it. Is that right? You're just sort of preoccupied about it. Right. Dr. Right. Uh, Ruth, is this a common syndrome among 16-year-old girls? Um, it depends. Sometimes you don't go with the normal way of life. Uh, a lot of reasons. I don't know. Maybe uh, you look up to older men more, respect mm -hmm. them, want to yeah. have their respect back. I know you have a new book out on the shelves. What, what's the title of that one, Dr. Ruth? How to have sex more fun? I don't know. Oh, really? Boy, you'd think the editors would have got hold of that and, <laughs> and uh, you know, tweaked it a little bit. It out, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, Cameron, uh, is, is, is your relationship with your dad been okay? Oh, with my dad? Oh, yeah. Is uh, he uh, still been in your life? And yeah, he's um, one of those kind of dads. He's really quiet. Um, I, I don't know. I didn't even think about that. He doesn't say much. Really, I, I like it when his friends come over, though, which is really weird. Why is that? Well, they're old. They're old. Because you're attracted they're to old. them? They're old. I don't think 45 is very old. Well, that's old. That's plenty old. We haven't seen a 45-year-old man uh, where's, naked. Where's your mom? Where's my mother? She's here. Oh, I come from a close-knit family. We're all, mm -hmm. you know, we're pretty... Um, no, get defensive. Yeah, we're just exploring. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I it, can be, it can be quite normal for a 16-year-old to be preoccupied with sort of bigger-than-life, older male images. That's not abnormal. To act on it, to go out and try to date guys in their 30s, that's what's not right. Right. So to have these sort of fantasies, so be it. That's a normal thing at your age, okay? Everybody? Uh, it's a common thing, let's put it that way. And it's not everybody has it, but uh, to have those sorts... I mean, that's where the whole rock star thing comes from. Right. right? Those guys aren't 18. Well, mostly. yeah, but I don't know. For it's you, like... it sounds like it's more than average in terms of the magnitude and the preoccupation and whatnot. And you got to look at what... What factors are motivating you to be intrigued, intrigued with older guys? Right, lay off the older guys. Now, uh, Tom? 
Yes. We are uh, we're have about two minutes before we got to go to break and uh, let you go and bring in Sonny Garcia. Okay, the person I'm Champion touching server. right now, when I count to three, you'll sit up in your chair. You are Omar from India. You are a psychic. You're here to read the minds of Adam and Dr. Drew. On the count of three, Omar from India, reading the minds of the people here at the radio station. One, two, three. Eyes open. Hi, I want you to tell the listeners, what is your name, please? My name is Omar from India. And, uh, Omar, what am I thinking right now? Oh, great one. Um, let me channel. Oh, he's got his hands up on his temples. He's really deep in trance at this point. I feel you've had a frustrating day. Yes, yes, it's true. Uh, let's see. You're frustrated with the way that everything is working for you, and your house is not... Going as planned. Yes, if he works masturbation in, he's uh, he's uh, and, hitting, uh, he's hitting Homer. Thousand. Yeah, he's about uh, a thousand. I stay out of some subjects. <laughs> good. good. And uh, that's basically all I can. That's all. What about right Drew? What is uh, what is he thinking? Um, I'm thinking that you're thinking that you can't wait to get home to your kids and. Uh, I'm losing it. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right, great Omar. Uh, perhaps brilliant Omar. Perhaps it is the uh, the electricity that runs the uh, station here and the transmitter and whatnot that has somehow uh, interfered with his frequency. Head dropping down, Omar. Deeply hypnotized. Now we Tom, have three people hypnotized. Tom, yes, sir. The problem is, is yes. uh, we got a break before the top of the hour. Okay. So we're basically uh, here's what we'll do. Uh, we'll go to break. We'll uh, we'll squeeze your number in one more time, and right. then we'll bring in uh, Sonny Garcia, world that champion. Sounds surfing. fine. When I count to three, the people that are hypnotized, you'll wake up out of the hypnotic sleep feeling good, feeling happy. You'll start to laugh. Every time you laugh and smile, it's going to increase your confidence. And we're going to break. Yourself. When yes, I count yeah, to five, we'll open your back. eyes and awake. And one, two, And Drew, why do I have to beg you to come into the studio every evening and, and join me for the radio show that you get paid just as much as I do for? Please, please, start, uh, uh, have a little more professional guests, approach. Oh, not... please, please. Come on, Drew. Stop dumping everything on me. You uh, interview Sonny. Yeah. Okay. Right. Hi, Sonny. Hello. Uh, we will be back in 10 seconds. This is Loveline on Radio Station. HFS at Atlas. You're listening to Love Line on 99.1 HFS. All right. The name of the show is Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew. The studio is a mess, and uh, I'm in a horrible mood tonight. But uh, that's not going to stop me from uh, what happened to your delivering house? a good show. Omar said you had a bad Nothing. Day I'm now. tired of you. I'm mad at you. Why? Are you just floating around like a, like a, a little pixie all night, a joint, standing out in the hall with the door open, having conversation with someone when the show starts. I have to, I have to uh, drag you back into the studio. Please, uh, start reading some bios, uh, clean up a few papers around here. It's a mess. Come on, focus on the show, please. Let me just uh, take care of uh, Tom Silver. Uh, phone number, if uh, you want to get hold of Tom and uh, solicit any of uh, his services, one uh, 888 Mind P W R. That would be uh, Mind Power. One eight 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 Mind Power. Now, Sonny Garcia is here, and uh, Sonny has uh, his uh, Sonny here with him. What's your son's name? Son named Stone. Stone. Yeah. Uh oh, he's going to be a tough one. You want to uh, put your headphones on, uh, please, and speak into uh, speak into that thing at the end there. How old is Stone? Stone will be four in February. Oh, really? Yeah. He's quite lucid. He was sleeping earlier, huh? Yeah, he was sleeping. Now he's um, up and someone put the energizer in. Stone, you, you want to say hi to the audience? Hi. Yeah. Hi. 
Oh, yeah. see, so already has uh, better verbal skills than Drew's kids. Drew, show him pictures of uh, of the triplet. No, I'm not mad at you now. I'm not uh, anything uh, screw you, you then. Go go off and do your own damn show in the hallway with Tom and his friends. All right, Sonny is here because uh, well, because there's a, a bevy of papers in front of me. No, I don't want that one. Uh, Board uh, Rider Expo. That would be uh, October 25th and uh, 26th. Um, Sonny, could you fill in some of the details for us? Um. I guess it's a, a show for snowboarding and skateboarding. And, um, next year they're going to have surfing in it. So we're going to go down and uh, check it out. But you're, oh, now obviously you're a surfer, so you'll not be uh, participating uh, this time around? Um, I'm going to go down. I, I I skateboard a little and I snowboard a lot. So right. I'll be down there checking everything out. And uh, how, do, how does it work? I've never been to one of these uh, expos. Uh, demonstrations and equipment and all that kind of stuff? Um, well, everybody shows their their new line of things. And right. You go down and check it out, and there's usually a bunch of models. And oh, really? And oh, okay. Now now we're talking. And uh, is the beer expensive? Um, usually it's free. Wow. Hey, hey, do they have... Oh, no, okay. He's trying to get audience down there. What about this Primo beer? Wasn't that from Hawaii? Yeah, it used to be in Hawaii. It was um, the first beer I ever drank in my life was a Primo beer when I was 13. You were saying that reminds me of another thing, that uh, you were going to just flesh out the Mahalo story here. Yes. And there's one other thing I'm realizing you see on everything over there that nobody would know about over here. On all the, do you ever, do you ever see crates of like food outside a grocery store at uh, that, that have Hawaiian products? Yeah. You ever, do you see anything on the on labels? Flies. Don't say no. no ka oi or something like that. What does that mean? No ka oi. Yeah. It means, it means number one. Right. That's that's oh, really? that's on everything. No ka oi. Yeah. That's uh, another thing. Maybe you could import over here, Anna. What about uh, what about mahalo? Tell us, because I say it at the end of every show we do, and a lot of people call in and want to know what it means. I think it means thank you. Yeah, mahalo means thank you. Does it mean anything else? Is it like aloha? No, aloha kind of means everything. Right. Hello, goodbye. We need a word like that that we can use when we're drunk. <laughs> Why do they say thank you and mahalo? We don't, you don't say thank you and gracias. Thank you and merci. Right. You say gracias, merci. Yeah, well, I, I think it's it's a sort of tourist thing. I think Hawaii... I mean, Hawaii is, is built on tourism, is it not? I mean, there, there's tons of uh, uh, dumb white people friendly. Mm -hmm. So when Don Ho gets up there, he says, thank you and mahalo. I, we'll hear Don Ho say that in a second. Do you have that, Engineer Mike? Okay. Well, show's running along very smoothly tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Sonny, you, uh, what, what island do you live on in Hawaii? I live on Oahu. Oh, the... Uh, I live on the main island. Oh, that's the a big island. tourist attraction. And uh, where? Where? Um, right now, I live on the west side. Mahalo. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I can't believe that came out of a Which person. Is, Kona's on the west, right? Is that the east? No, no. I, I live on Oahu. The big island is, is Hawaii. Oh, I see. All right. So... And you it, surf... It uh, uh, are, are you better on the big waves than the uh, smaller waves? Um, I would have to say, yeah, but... I surf everything. When you start doing the tour, you have to learn how to surf small. What, what, is, what is the uh, biggest uh, swells you've paddled out into? Bigger than you probably would want to. Um, I don't know, like 25 feet. Oh, wide. that is tidal wave. That's tsunami. What size board do you use? Just different boards for different like conditions? Like 10, 6 and, and waves like that. True. We call it a stick, by the way. And, the way, and do you go both? Do you, is it right, left-handed, the way you surf? Um, both ways? I'm a regular foot, but... Um, you know, we surf Waimea, and Waimea has a right, and there's a left on it, but you wouldn't want to go left. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I I can't figure out why thousands of people aren't killed surfing every year. They, they are. Lots of people. Thousands? Not thousands, but thousands well, of people I, are probably killed in the ocean every year. Okay, true. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, I mean, it's because of the surf, and that's yeah. why it's... That's why. It's, I just mean, like, I, I'd go out in the, the Santa Monica Bay. Well, you go out in Santa Monica Bay, you get hit with a syringe and a jellyfish, and then some uh, some hobo dry humps you when you wash up on shore, so that's dangerous enough. But, I mean, I've been out to Zuma here when the waves were five, six feet and felt like I was just being completely pummeled. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, fearing for my life yeah. with the reptide and, and whatnot. I couldn't imagine going out with 50 
15, 18, and a board. 25 Deal foot. Deal with a board, too. Actually, at that point, the board would probably be a plus because I'd be clinging to it uh, for dear life. But I couldn't imagine going out there. I mean, do you ever have to get picked up by a helicopter or anything? Um, nowadays, I have the jet ski, so it's pretty safe. I mean, considering do you, you'd have to be pretty unlucky. Do you wear a helmet or is that considered pussy stuff? Well, I, I wouldn't use a helmet. You'd make fun of a guy using a helmet, wouldn't you? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> what is that bravado? It's like hockey players. Half the, you know, uh, before, just a couple of years ago, nobody wore a helmet. I'd have three helmets and an ass pad <laughs> on out there. Actually, the helmet, the helmet um, when, you, when you fall, it, it doesn't penetrate the water as, as good. Right. So you end, up getting a wrench. Yeah, you end up getting a wrenched neck. So oh, I see. You can use a helmet. but Right. All right, so but you'll uh, well at least it'll be a quick death when you snap your head. No blood for the sharks to uh, uh, attack. All right, so uh, Sonny Garcia, champion surfers here, and we're going to the phones. James, yes, you're 15. Yes, I am. Go right ahead. I'm I'm about to hang up on you, James. <laughs> okay, now I'm really hanging up. I'm moving on. <laughs> Lindsay, yeah, Stone's more articulate than most of our uh, callers tonight. You're 17. What's going on? All right, I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yes, ma'am. Um, I've heard and I've read in a bunch of places that left-handers are more susceptible to the effects of um, like drugs and alcohol. In and what that sense? And they're also three times more likely to become alcoholic. Uh, I don't know that. Uh, and there are various strange facts circulating around about left-handed people. Yeah. Uh, but I, nothing, when you mentioned you know, sort of medical conditions associated with being left-handed, nothing much comes to mind for me. Okay. Well, I'm left-handed, by the way. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. You got a lot of hair in your ass? Uh, no. Mm. Sorry. You okay? What? Are you, seem, you sound worried about yourself. Does something bother you? No. No? Oh. No, I'm fine. All right. Okay. All right. Enjoy your left-handedness. Okay, you too. I love when people take uh, sort of inane stuff and then try to lay claim to it. Yeah, you know, we're more creative. Yeah, than, right. uh, yeah? You're working at an IHOP. Yeah. Sister. <laughs> Imagine where you'd be without the left-handedness. I- You'd be like uh, sifting, uh, uh, sifting through a uh, you know a trash heap, looking for recyclables. All right, uh, should we take the next call? call uh, Kalex. Yes. Oh boy, you're uh, 28. You. What's going on? What's up, guys? Uh, Adam, I just want to say you're you're a genius. Why? Well, thank you. And Dr. Drew, you too. Oh, I just, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> but uh, uh, I have a question. Yeah. Can you be um, sexually uh, molested as a kid and still um, have no problems? I mean, a single episode. Well, because see, when I was a kid, <clears throat> my um, my brother's babysitter used to mess around with me, and actually, I loved it. How that old was were you? my first experience when I was seven years old. And it was a female or male? <laughs> that was a female. Come on, man. Uh, yeah, come on, Drew. No, it doesn't have to be a horrible experience. Only and, females and, uh, babysitter screw around with their male partners. Come and, on, uh, and there's there. I think there is evidence in the literature that suggests that if it happens for a brief period of time and it's not at the hands of somebody who is violating some sort of boundary or trust, uh, no, it doesn't have to have impact. Yeah, because I mean, it, has, it has to have some impact, but it doesn't have to result in pathology. Let's put it after that way. she messed with me, I wouldn't leave her alone, and I was just seven. Yeah, well, but that's that's not sort of uh, age appropriate behavior. It puts you into a realm that can be traumatizing and difficult. If it wasn't, yeah, you're lucky. Let, let's, uh, Calix, uh, how's your life working out? Uh, fantastic. Great. Yeah. All right, you, you have a girlfriend? Um, no, I don't have a girlfriend right now, no. All right, have you had a girlfriend? I'm divorced, as, uh, actually. All right, so it hasn't affected you in any kind of life. Fantastic. Way. Well, when did you get divorced? Uh, last year. Okay. And well, what circumstances did the divorce occur? Well, um, actually, the, the relationship just uh, solved itself out. Why? Um, I'm st- I still have that qu- that and uh, that question in my head, but um, I mean, I really couldn't answer that. I mean, I don't know. Describe exactly. the circumstances in which things went bad. Um, well, my my ex wife had a, uh, several emotional problems. She's been through a, a accident. Um, several things that are out of my control. I mean, I know it was, uh, for sure it wasn't my fault. Her whole family loved me and all that. But uh, we just have to go our separate ways. I mean, I'm a pretty healthy guy myself. You know? Right. Well, do, we do you gen- that. Have you generally had stable relationships in your life? Or they've been pretty yeah. cha- dramatic or chaotic? No. You don't tend to go for women with a lot of drama? or. or... I always go for the long-distance relationship, seems like. I'm from Brazil. Uh-huh. So, um, 
seems like I always get into long distance relationships, but I don't think I can relate that to uh, enjoying uh, sex at seven years old. Okay. Or not sex, but sexual experience. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, they have different customs in Brazil. Perhaps uh, that's a rite of passage. Uh, sort of uh, like the uh, Jewish uh, on the bar mitzvah, they get the uh, cake and a bunch of money from an uncle. Perhaps in Brazil, at age seven, um, they're uh, they're uh, they're uh, entitled to some nookie. Uh, I, I don't know the custom, yeah, so. but it, you know, it's, Alex, you, it's no hard, big deal. Hard to Joe. tell whether this uh, put a dent in you or not. You sound all right. Um, by the way, uh, I'm in about. Vegas right now, and uh, Drew, whenever yeah. you want to come to Vegas, I'm going to comp everybody to the Follies Bergier, the Tropicana. Yeah, you're not over at the Rio. Now I'm at the Tropicana. Okay. A little uh, Brazilian uh, hu humor there. Oh, Sonny, uh, can you believe it? I, I know I, I'd like to live in Hawaii. What a life. Uh, oh, yeah. You don't have any of these problems. Uh, surfing. That's why I showed him get over dancing, there. Dancing, um, uh, the smoking spleef with Don Ho. I think Don Ho has a pot farm. I really do. We, we asked him about it, and he uh, he didn't really deny it. He just went, Mahalo. Mahalo. Might have one. There it is. <laughs> does does marijuana just grow wild there? Um, it grows in a lot of places. I don't think wild, but there's definitely a lot. And and uh, do they do they try to take care of it and eradicate it like they uh, do here stateside? I mean, helicopters and uh, all that DEA stuff. Yeah, they have a. The helicopters, but so you got to put it, like a camouflage net over. It it doesn't work. Everybody it, still grows it. Good. That's uh, that's why everyone's so happy over there. James. Yes, sir. You're 15. Yeah. My question is for um, Drew. Yeah. Um, a while ago, um, my girlfriend got pregnant, but um, she was spotting, and we took her to the hospital, and um, somehow she, the test they gave her said negative. I'm wondering if that would be normal. Wait a minute. She was pregnant by a home uh, pregnancy test. What I mean by that is um, she had two um, home pregnancy tests. Home pregnancy tests, yes. Which I know aren't 100% effective. Right. But, um, they both said positive. Right. And the test that she took at the hospital was like a couple, a month or two later. But she'd, been, but she'd been spotting in the meantime. She, she was gaining weight and... She only, like, spotted at one night or something. So you wonder how she could have had a miscarriage yeah. with just such limited spotting. Mm -hmm. um, I have to wonder that, too. Uh, did she see a doctor after that hospital visit? Um, the, the only time she saw a doctor was, like, um, to get a checkup. And and that was after the emergency room visit? Um, no, nah, that was a little bit before. Uh, is she? How long ago was it that the test was negative? Um, it was it, it was about like three weeks ago. And now, does she still feel pregnant or seem pregnant? Um, other than the weight she gained, she still has. That's about it. Okay, she she needs to see a gynecologist. Did they? Because I, I don't quite sure what happened at the hospital. But even typically, if somebody has a miscarriage, they'll be sure that all the products of conception are gone to make sure they don't have persistent bleeding or infection. And they say products of conception, you mean like beer cans and condom right. wrappers and that's that kind the, of stuff. Uh, yeah, that's the, right. Products of conceiving is what that is. This is these are the, oh, the post products, right. which is the. I think it meant stuff like around the bed. Yes, right. Hey, uh, Drew. Yeah. Could uh, Sonny. I came up with a brilliant idea. How's Stone doing over there? He's tired. He's Son, doing pretty good. Uh, Stone is uh, Sonny's uh, four-year-old uh, son. He's uh, he's up. He's down. He's chatty. He's sleepy. He's nappy. <laughs> he's stony. He's pissed at you. And he's pissed at me. The uh, well, who knows what time it is uh, for him now? What the? Wait a minute. Two hours Why earlier, is it an hour? Yeah. Uh, Why is early? Two hours earlier. Oh, is it two hours? Jeez. Um, here's what I want to say. I came up with this brilliant idea some weeks back, which was uh, you know the dogs they have sniffing at the airports. They can yeah. sniff bombs. They can sniff uh, the plastic explosives. They can sniff uh, garden vegetables that are being smuggled in. Uh, pineapples, uh, if you will. They can sniff out uh, uh, what else? Drew? Drugs, marijuana. Sure. Um, Dogs that sniff out venereal disease in women. And I think they could sniff out pregnancy. Couldn't they, Drew? I suppose, sure. So couldn't There's probably some, some change that goes on they could sniff out. Right. So not only uh, do we have venereal disease, uh, cancer, which I believe I could train a dog to sniff out. Uh, so every pharmacy could just have a, a series of hounds sitting in the corner. You just 
Yeah, uh, well, yeah, it's a couple of beagles yeah. with the uh, different uh, different vests on, yeah. and they could have one sniffing for pregnancy. Sure. How much cheaper would that be than uh, taking that test and having uh, the indignity of uh, urinating onto a stick? Please, Karen. Yes. You're 18. Yes. Now, Drew's going to carry the show from here on in. It's Adam. Okay. Drew's going to uh, Drew's going to talk to you. Then he's going to send us out to commercial. Then he's going to bring us bring us back and uh, and chat up the guests. What's going on, Karen? Uh, yeah, uh, my mom just recently got married in March, and um, her new husband is a really really nice guy. He's really sweet, very affectionate, and I've grown very attached to him. Um, and he he seems more of a father to me than my real dad. Where is your real dad? Oh, he, I mean, I see him, like, he's, like, in Illinois. But you know, have never had a close relationship with him? Uh, no, he used to, like, he, like, physically, like, abused my sister. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, he never hit me or anything, mm -hmm. I think, because, like, I was his real daughter and my sister was his step stepdaughter. Boy. And, um... I, I would hit my real daughter faster than I would hit my stepdaughter. <laughs> I really would. Yeah. Well, but, so you're having these sort of uh, familial feelings for for your stepdad, right? No, I mean, I'm just, I feel like he's more of my father. I understand. What, really what's your question for us? I wanted to know, like, um, if I'm, like, too old to start, like, calling him dad. Well, why don't you ask him? Well, see, he's, like, a very shy guy, and mm. he's really quiet, mm -hmm. and I kind of, like, I don't know if it would be appropriate for me to ask him. So it makes it, the fact that he does seem so, so withdrawn makes it difficult for you to bring up tough material like this right yeah i mean i kind of had to like tell him how i felt like in a paper that i wrote for one of my classes and how did he take that i mean he almost i think he almost went in tears i mean my mom and i did when we why don't you ask your mom what does she say when you ask about this oh i don't really talk to my mom about it why because like i don't know because it's just something that i've like had inside well, well what is his name his name's gary gary do you feel comfortable calling him Gary? Oh, yeah. I call, I'm like, hey, what's up, Gary? I mean, last night we had a conversation on the phone for like an hour and a half. But you want to call him, you want it, you want it to be more than Gary. Yeah, I mean, like when I'm talking with his like kids, because his kids are both like my well, age. Yeah. So I, we, like, sometimes I'll call him like kind of like dad in front of them. So we're saying, uh, we, I think we need a title in between um, whatever the guy's name is and dad. Mm -hmm. Like um, bro. <laughs> or dude, Stad, or stepdad. Stad. <laughs> there you go. You don't want to call him stepdad. Uh, you're not quite comfortable enough with dad, so you call him uh, Stad or uh, <laughs> Uncle Gary. But Uncle she, Gary. She wants nice. to call him dad. That's All right. Thing. Well, call him dad. You're, you know, you can either just start doing it and see how he reacts. Uh, well, which what's would be he going to do? Uncomfortable for her. Or um, just bring it up. I mean, the problem here is that it sounds like she is so tightly involved in this family that she doesn't feel independent enough to have separate feelings and separate desires, and she's worried about how she's going to affect their feelings and. Uh, you got to step up a little bit here. Now, she's 18. Uh, I, it does sound a little funny to begin starting somebody calling somebody dad when you're 18. But if you've never had a dad, you want to have that kind of relationship. It could be good. So. All right. Uh, Sonny Garcia is here. He's a, a champion surfer. He's uh, here to promote the uh, Board Rider Expo, which is uh, October 25th and 26th. Uh, his young son, Stone, is here, who I'm uh, sure will um, begin surfing. Uh, probably be... Uh, better than I would uh, have ever been by the age of mm, seven. I was going for five and oh, a half. Oh, wow. I, had a, I had a Ziffy board when I was up. Uh, you remember those, Drew? Uh, oh, those yeah. Those little purple blue things with the handles in it. Yeah, I had a little plug in it, so yeah. it would pop out and take on water about halfway uh, into the pool and you just uh, sink to the bottom of the deep end. But uh, anyway, uh, Sonny's here, Stone is here, Drew is here, and we'll be back after this. Aloha. This is Don Ho, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Corolla and Dr. Drew. Mahalo. <laughs> the great Don Ho, who sent us a, a big sack of Don Ho chocolate-covered macadamia nuts. I'll tell you, Hawaii is, uh, I, I, I just, I wouldn't live in Hawaii like I don't wear expensive running shoes around every day because it just feels too good and it's too comfortable and I don't want to get used to it because then I'm scared if I put on a pair of loafers, I'm going to start complaining. <laughs> like, what do you jog in if you go to work in running shoes, Drew? Right. Where right. would you go if you lived in Hawaii? You'd have to right. go to Burbank right. on, on vacation. Right. Sonny Garcia is here. He is a uh, big-time surfer, and he's here to... Um, Promote the uh, Board Riders Expo, which is uh, October 25th and 26th at the uh, 
the Pyramid at uh, CSU Long Beach. Uh, Saturday at uh, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then uh, Sunday, 10 a.m. to uh, 5 p.m. Ten bucks in advance or... Um, $145 in sodomy at the door. Oh, that doesn't seem right. Mm. I guess they really want you to buy those advanced tickets, Drew. No, it's 12 bucks uh, at the door. So, um, oh, here's a phone number if you're interested. 714-376-6942. And uh, Sonny has brought his uh, young son, Stone, who's now getting the, uh, the, the uh, Malaysian crocodile belly rub technique that uh, my uh, Aunt Vicky used to use on me when she wanted me to go to sleep. Sonny sporting the puka shells. Drew, did you ever sport the pukas uh, when they're at their height here, about 77? Yes. Yes. Yes, everybody. Dr. Drew and the pukas. It was more like 73. Six? 73. No, yeah, it was for not. Me. For me. For me. I'm telling you when oh, I did you went, yeah. Did you go to Hawaii when you were a kid? No. No. You sure you bastard yes. in that line of me? No, but I lived at the beach. It was not 73. I'm just telling Son, you what I, Sonny, what, I what was the height of the puka shell craze here in the United States, in Southern been, California especially? I don't even remember. I'm just it, saying what I did. It's been a while. Is there always a puka shell uh, 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 menagerie going on in Hawaii? Is everywhere where uh, puka shells there? No, but it's making a comeback. So. What's more prevalent, the big pukas or the small pukas? I notice you're sporting the small pukas. The small ones. When uh, Drew, I'm telling you, God is my witness, it was uh, 77, I believe 78. You. I'm just telling you when I did it. Oh, so you're saying you're you're some some sort of pioneer in the Puka yeah, for movement? Sure. Right. Now we're not making fun of you, uh, Sonny, because you are uh, the Puka shells indigenous uh, to you. Your people uh, need it to uh, live. But uh, Drew over here from Pasadena was just trying to get laid in '73. Hair out the hair, hair like uh, Leif Garrett uh, Puka shells. Did you have the big Pukas or the uh, small Pukas? A little one, but I remember there was like a, something hanging, like a shell hanging from the front of it. <laughs> <laughs> Was it was it the abalone in the front? No, it was like some kind of cone shell, but cut in like cross section. I remember uh, when everyone discovered. Uh, I don't know when it was. It must have been like in the early seventies. Hey, everybody, you can use an abalone shell for an ashtray. <laughs> and uh, from there on in, it was uh, abalone everywhere. Everyone put their cigarettes out in the beautiful abalone. Yeah. But uh, I had uh, I made a move at the Pukas too, not because I was uh, any sort of uh, uh, fashion miser, but because. It just had to be done. I was almost a mandate that you had to get puka shells yeah. in 1976. Although I was such a poor bastard, they they, they were like twelve bucks. You had I went to, you down had to, go to the, the beach and string them yourself. No, I got the no. plastic oh. pukas. <laughs> Humiliation. <laughs> there were clip-ons too, uh, I, I believe. So, um, uh, Sunny, the uh, Sunny, did you bring us any pukas? No, actually, I didn't. No. My, my sister's been making, and she gave me. This necklace, so. Oh, she uh, actually, uh, what did oh, she do? Just go and collect them and drill them out and string them and the whole thing? Yep. Oh, boy, that is, uh, that's a beautiful one. You don't, uh, you just uh, fill your day with whimsical hobbies. Well, here we just avoid gunfire and inhale smoke. Isaac. Yes. You're 16. Um, yeah. Well, actually, okay. A couple of nights ago, actually, it was Thursday night, um, I guess a week ago. Um, me and my girlfriend were having sex, right? And we fell asleep naked on the couch. And then her parents came in. Oh, boy, and, is that stupid. Yeah. What were you thinking? I don't know. Well, then were, you were at her house? Yeah. Did you? Did her folks uh, die in a, a plane wreck? Or did you not know that they were coming home after the theater? Or? Well, they were they're pretty sound sleepers. It was pretty late. It was like, oh, they were home. Oh. oh, they were home. Oh, uh, well, okay, I'm going to uh, deduct one stupidity point and then add uh, add it right back on. Because at first I thought they were out of the house and they came home to find you two sleeping on the couch, which is, uh, you really have to be a moron to pull that stunt. So I will deduct a point for that, but I'm now going to add one for, for, add two. for banging your, I'm adding two and a half now, for banging your girlfriend in the living room while her folks were in the next room. Well, actually it was a bonus room. The bonus room? Yeah. Is that like uh, is that what the rumpus room becomes when you get when you get laid? I guess so. Any room you get laid in is apparently the bonus room. <laughs> Anyways, um, but um, tonight she just broke up with me because I haven't really talked to her since. Uh, well, what did her folks do when they came in and discovered you guys sleeping in the nude? They really didn't say much. I mean, which is kind of worse than them yelling at me. But um, they certainly said something to her, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. Did they wake you up? No, we were. Uh, well, actually. Um, oh, a light was on 
like when I woke up, and then like they came in. So I think they saw us before that, obviously. Uh huh. So they turned the light on. Yeah, and then they came in later. After I got dressed. Uh -huh. Were you supposed to be sleeping over? No. You. All right, well, what's your oh, question boy. for us? Oh, well, anyways, okay. All right. She just broke up with me, mm. and she says it was because of like other issues and not because of her parents, and mm. I'm really confused. What know? are the other issues? Yeah, I, uh, just like, um, she thinks I was being kind of too jealous of her. Like, I, I can just imagine somebody that would do this sort of thing, there would be other issues. You know what I'm saying? Well, there's certain brashness yeah, and arrogance right. uh, here, but it doesn't really fit well with the, the personality profile I've put together from Isaac so far. Okay, all right. Uh, there's a uh, certain uh, uh, laissez-faire attitude you have towards sex <laughs> in other people's houses. But, um, Isaac, here's, what, here's my take on this thing. And, Sonny, you, um, you uh, as a man who's had sex, uh, because uh, uh, Stone kids. is a... Oh, Just, three kids. Uh, oh, okay. So at least three times now, unless they're triplets. Uh, you'll back me up on this. Uh -huh. um, she is bold enough to have sex in her house while her parents are home, and then let her boyfriend sleep over. Yeah. She's defiant yeah, enough. She's, she's angry with her parents. If her folks came in and said, I forbid you from seeing this uh, young uh, boy, Isaac, she would defy them again. This is not a mama's girl. Mama's girls and people that mind their parents' wishes will not have sex in the house, uh, up the hall, and then uh, fall asleep, uh, legs akimbo, uh, nuts to the wind, while, uh, while her parents uh, walk into the room. Right. She would defy them. Yep. So she just wants to break up with you, Isaac. Okay. What do you think, Sonny? I think that's the issue, for yeah. sure. Yeah. She, she would defy them. She'd crawl out the window and come out of your house and have sex with you. So she wants to break up. Okay. And she even told you as much. Yeah. She didn't even blame it on her parents. No. Well, she kind of did, but... Well, if she really, if she was really, really into you... Now you're she... saying she blamed it on the parents? Before you said it was because of some issues. No, please. Isaac? Well, it's a, it's a mixture of the two, I think. Okay. The world's most... Uh, uh, the most selective memory is uh, in the heads of our listeners. All right, Isaac? Yes. Here's the bottom line. This is what I've learned from... Um, 30, no, how many years have I been dating? Uh, started when I was 27, I'm 33 now. Six years. From six years of dating. Um, ultimately, whatever people want is what they ask for. It's not because their friends don't like you. It's not because their folks don't like you. It's not because uh, you live across town. It's not because you go to rival schools. It's uh, not because of this or because of that. It's not because you're in the goth scene and she's into the new wave scene. It's because uh, they don't want to be with you anymore. Or, uh, conversely, if they're really into you, nothing will be able to stop them from being close to you. Sonny, am I right? That's Absolutely. what I think. The, uh, the puka man, uh, the primo man has spoken. <laughs> Got to get some of that primo beer back here. Everyone tells me it's horrible beer. I don't know if the Hawaiians are known for their beer making. But and I loved it when I was 13. It wasn't that good. 13? As I told you, it was the first beer I ever drank was that Primo beer. Well, I, no, you didn't say you were 13. Yeah, I did. Oh, four, 13, 14. Yeah, I did say 13. Here was my deal. You know how, uh, Sonny, uh, I'll talk to you because Drew didn't grow up in a realistic environment, but you coming from the uh, tough streets of uh, Malahajo <laughs> and uh, <laughs> me coming from the bad streets of North Hollywood, we know what it's like, uh, peer pressure and whatnot. We know it's like to run with a tough crowd and uh, to have, you know, to be drinking beer at an early age. I think I started drinking beer when I was five years old. Oh, I, really? I used uh, to run up and um, get my grandpa his primo, and I'd have a few sips on the way down. From the from the corner market? No, just from up, upstairs in the Oh, really? In the house. Wow, see, Grandpa had him trained. And uh, in, in beer was bad tasting when we were real little. I mean, you winced, but you drank it because uh, it was sort of a rite of passage into manhood and your friends were drinking and whatnot. But I'd always drink it, you know, the Mickey's Big Mouth and stuff and make a face. But I drank this Primo once, and it was like an epiphany I had when I was 13. I said, hey, this is good. I think you'd still make a face if you drank Mickey's Big Mouth. <laughs> Actually, I would, yeah. <laughs> drinking some out of a, a simulated green barrel, just a little frightening. But the, the point is, is I like this Primo, and uh, no sooner did I find a beer that I enjoyed at uh, age 13 than it uh, somehow disappeared off the shelves of the 7-Eleven, and I guess can only be found in uh, Hawaii. Or is it gone from Hawaii it's, now? It's so. gone. Oh, boy. 
Somebody must have a reserve of Primo within the sound of my voice. I'd, I'd like them to uh, ship a six-pack to Loveline so I could relive uh, my tender years. And Drew, you could, uh, you could watch me relive my infamous, uh, infamous uh, beer-chugging, peanut-digesting competition in which I uh, vomited into uh, Dave Sorensen's upstairs trash can. So just, I'm so proud of you tonight. Thank you. Sonny, you've, you've thrown up a few times from drinking, haven't you? Yeah, I've um, prayed to the porcelain god a few times. I, I would reckon that I have thrown up either voluntary or uh, involuntary from drinking. Drew, how, you've never thrown up from drinking? Oh, maybe once. <laughs> you made me spit on my sleeve. I would say that I've thrown up in this country uh, 15 to 18 times and probably... Five times in Tijuana for a grand total of uh, low low to mid twenties. Sonny, what can I put you down for? I've thrown up probably about at least that many times in yeah. probably twenty different countries. Oh really? Oh yeah. Well, he's on tour. You see, I, I just had to. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't have that option. An athlete, as a young as an athlete. Oh, I could just see him paddling out in a nice uh, chum slick of vomit uh, behind the board. All right, uh, Sonny Garcia's here. He is a uh, big time surfer and alcoholic, but he's also a uh, father and a uh, purveyor of puka. And uh, we'll be back with more of Sonny, Drew, and you after this. <laughs> Hi, this is David Allen Greer, and you are listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and the one and only Dr. Drew. Yes, you is. And uh, who was in here earlier? Tom Silver was in here, the uh, fabulous hypnotist. And uh, then uh, he made way for Sonny Garcia. Sonny is here to uh, promote the uh, Board Riders uh, Expo. Sonny is uh, a native of Hawaii and is a uh, big time, uh, big wave uh, surfer. Something um, I would I would never do. Although um, I do have a strange attraction to the sea. Huh. I, I love everybody does. Oh, they do. Yeah, but mine's better. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm attracted even more. I uh, I've never done this in my life, but uh, the the thing that the the reoccurring um, theme I have in my head is sitting on a beach and watching thirty foot waves uh, roll in and crash. I, I think that would be just uh, phenomenal. I've been to the beach when there's been six foot waves and 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 found it to be uh, pretty breathtaking. But I could only imagine what uh, a huge swell on the uh, north shore of, of Hawaii or uh, Oahu or uh, what's the uh, what's the big Oahu. island. Oahu would would be like. I just uh, couldn't imagine that, and I certainly couldn't imagine intentionally uh, paddling out into uh, the vortex of that storm. But uh, that's what Sonny does. So, um, and he doesn't wear a helmet either. You wear shorts and stuff, though, don't you? Just shorts. Yeah, you don't, you don't need a uh, wetsuit in Hawaii, do you? No, the water is really warm. Even during the uh, winter, right? They don't have a winter, do you? How do you know when it's winter? The only difference between winter and summer is maybe it rains a couple of extra days in the winter. Right. And uh, that didn't ever stop you from doing anything over there. And Hawaii is really weird because it'd be raining and then pow, it's the, the middle of summer. Right. Which uh, is uh, different than a lot of parts around here. Anyway, uh, Board Riders Expo, 25th and 26th at the uh, Pyramid, which is uh, CSU Long Beach. Uh, okay, Drew, you'll be there? Sure. You'll be, uh, you'll be on one of those boards. Uh, remember those flat boards that had the, uh, had the ball in the middle of right. it and you could sort of uh, hone your balance skills? Do they even have that anymore? I'm both. You know what I'm talking about? No. It was just a flat board. There's, there's a famous picture of uh, Hugh Hefner doing that. Right. That? Yeah. Yeah, there, there, it was real hot in the late 60s, yeah. early 70s or something. It's a, a board about with, the size of a, of a large skateboard. With like a small rolling pin under it. With a rolling pin in the middle. Actually, a big yeah, rolling yeah, pin. And, and you like just sort of get on it and, and, and stand on it till you get too stoned and then fall off and hurt yourself. All right. Uh, Jared. Yes. You're 26. Yes. You're on with Sonny Garcia. Good evening, gentlemen. I've got to say, Adam, Drew, you guys have a hell of a show. Keep up the good work. Thank you. i got a couple of questions for Sonny. Sonny, since uh, Mark Fu's death, um, has your attitude or uh, ability to surf big waves changed at all? Have you, have you gotten more conservative, or, or do you not care? Um, what happened to him? I think um, Mark um, drowned at um, Mavericks up in San Francisco. Um, since Mark's death, um, I don't think, you know, it, to me, it's, you know, you're going to die one day and, you know, for Mark, um, 
he enjoyed surfing big waves, and that's what he did. And is Mavericks real big? It gets really big. It gets just as big as Hawaii. So what? Uh, what? Ha- it's uh, cold though. And you got yeah, sharks. It's cold. And yeah, you have to use a wetsuit. Yeah. And uh, crazy homosexuals attacking you on the beach. What? Um, and uh, overpriced chowder. It's really scary there. What happened to him? He was out uh, on a big day. Um, I think the the board actually hit him and the head. knocked him unconscious. Yeah. And you know nobody's watching. Or? And yeah, they didn't notice where he was. You know uh. the waves are so big. Um, they found him later. Uh. So that was unfortunate. And uh, but if he was wearing that helmet, uh, I was advocating earlier on in the show, perhaps he'd uh, still Maybe be here. Maybe he was wearing a helmet, but you know we all take our chances, and um, you know. So it hasn't it hasn't stopped you uh, from surfing the big me, waves, nor has it stopped anybody else. It's it's just it, a hazard of the trade. Yeah. Jared. Yes. You a surfer? Yes, I am. I've been for about twelve years now. I, I think it's something you got to get into early. Yeah, I really do. Yeah, I started early in high school, and it was tough to learn the first first few hundred times I went out. But after that, it got better. You know, I'm scared to go surf, and I'll tell you why. Because I'm, I'm scared it may take. You might like it. And here's the deal. Sonny makes a nice living surfing. Uh, I wouldn't. And I have a lot of friends who surf. Biggest losers in the world. They can't hold down jobs. Uh, too busy surfing. They're still living at home. Surfing becomes a religion. 